Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're going to be talking about how to overwrite a particular value in the prototype of an object. So to basically translate that into code, let's just go through an example. But first, oh yeah, you bet. You better go check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create a student object. And what this is going to have is a major. And we'll just say this person is an English major like so. And we're also going to set the prototype. So we'll say object.set prototype of, and then we'll say student, and we want the prototype to be the user. So this is going to inherit the uh, active being true. So right now we have a teacher that is active true and a student that is active true. So what we can do is say teacher.active, and then we can also say student.active, and these should both be true. True, true. And what I wanna do is now overwrite this value inside of the student. So to do that, what we can do is say student.active and set it to false. Now, what is going to happen here? Because if you think about it, both the student and the teacher share this value. So if we set it to false, is it going to show up as false for just the student? Or is it going to set, show up as false for both the student and the teacher? Let's find out. So I'm just going to put some text here just so it's a little bit easier to read. Now let's do a refresh, and you can see the teacher remains true and the student becomes false. Why is this? Well, it all has to do with how the properties are found. So when you say student.active, the very first thing it's going to do is it's going to look on this object to see if it exists. So when you say student.active, such as in right here, the very first thing it's going to do is it's going to look on that student to see if it exists. When we assign it a value, it's going to put that value on that object. So if we get rid of the dot actives and just look at the objects themselves, you'll see what I mean. Do a refresh, the teacher and the student, you can see the active false is directly on the student rather than on the prototype, which is down here. So in a way we're just masking over this value that's in the prototype. When we ask for teacher.active, it first looks on the teacher object, doesn't find it, so then it goes to the prototype and then it finds it. In theory, if this did not exist, it would look in the prototype again, and then there wouldn't be any more prototypes, so it would be undefined. As an example, we could just print teacher.tacos, do a refresh, and look at that, teacher undefined. The teacher's not undefined, the teacher.tacos is undefined. The text teacher comes from right here. So the key takeaways, when you're asking for a particular property, it first looks on the object, if it's not found, it goes to the prototype, and it will continue up that chain until there's no more prototypes. When you set a value, it's going to set it directly on the object. So in this situation, the false is going to be shown when we ask for student.active. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about instance properties versus prototype properties, when you should use which, and some other stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you now understand how you can override a value for a particular object when you want to cover up what the prototype value is. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.